Hi guys, Kieran McAvoy here from A Clever Chimp, and on this channel we talk, learn and discuss about maths, physics and all things engineering. This video is part of our guide to engineering maths, and today we're going to be moving on from talking about simultaneous equations in the standard sense and start thinking about them in terms of matrix algebra. All of that is coming right up. So here's where we left off. We had three pairs of simultaneous equations. One that will give us a unique solution, one that gave us no solutions at all, and one that gave us an infinite amount of solutions. So before we start talking about understanding it in terms of linear algebra and matrix algebra, I want to actually just mention the fact that when you're first really introduced to solving simultaneous equations using matrices, you're led down the path of putting it straight into matrix format. You're just putting it straight into matrix format, then you understand matrix multiplication, and then you go ahead and solve it, and that's that's pretty much how that's pretty much how it works. But I never really found a way in which I ever really understood why we just jumped straight into this square format kind of kind of method. So I want to just start talking about a way in which we can understand how we can get to that point first, get to that format first. And along the way, we'll be able to enlighten a little bit more information from, from the simultaneous equations. So let's start off with our unique solution pair of simultaneous equations. We have 3x minus y is equal to 8 and minus 2x plus 4y is equal to minus 2. Now, here's an interesting thing, okay? Here's a, here's a little thought, thought process that we can go through here. Let's just, let's just not think about the two lines anymore. Let's not think about two lines crossing and then an x and y value satisfying both of the equations. Let's think about the idea that we have a, a Cartesian plane, a 2D plane, and we just we pick a point on that plane, giving us an x and y value, any x and y value we want. And what these equations could be saying to us is that the first equation is going to transform that x and y, x and y point, those x and y values, and give us a new x value, say, let's call that x dash, let's just say that that's x dash, and the, and the bottom equation, minus 2x plus 4y, let's say that, that that takes the point, the x and y point that we're talking about, and gives us a new y value, y dash. That's kind of why the idea of matrix transformations all sort of started coming about, is actually understanding, just transforming these understanding these equations as, as transforming an x and y coordinate, an x and y point, to another x and y point. So let's start thinking about notation here. Let's start actually like putting it into, into linear algebra or matrix algebra notation. With matrix algebra and um, therefore linear algebra, um, it, it tends to tends to be, in terms of notation-wise, it tends to all be about bringing things together and grouping things together, like how a matrix is. A matrix is just a way of holding lots of information in a nice, comfortable, helpful way, you know? So let's start by trying to get these two equations down to one equation, but still holding all the same information. Let's try vectorizing both sides. So on the left hand side we're going to have a vector with the first element being 3x minus y and the second element being minus 2x plus 4y. And on the right hand side we're going to, going to have another vector 8 minus 2. So the, so the first element is 8 and the second element is minus 2. So immediately we've already got only one equal sign here. We've got a, a vector equation. We've just got one equation here with a vector on the left hand side and a vector on the right hand side. So let's go, let's go a little bit further now. Let's go a little bit further and let's split, let's split the vector on the left hand side up into a linear combination of vectors. So we can split that left hand side up into 3 minus 2 multiplied by x and then we're going to add 
a vector minus 1, 4, and we're going to have that multiplied by y. So that gives us, that gives us a linear combination of these two vectors, 3 minus 2 and minus 1, 4. And all of that is equal to 8 minus 2. So what that's saying here is that we have two scalar variables here, x and y, that are scaling the 3 minus 2 and the minus 1, 4, however many times, to give us this 8 minus 2 vector. And just a quick plug into actually understanding what a linear combination is, it's just a combination of scaled vectors. Okay, so for, for instance, one of the most common, well, arguably the main vectors you're going to be using is the i hat and j hat vectors. And what the i hat and j hat vectors are, the i hat is the unit vector in the horizontal direction or the x direction, and the j hat is the unit vector in the y direction or the vertical direction. So for instance, take the vector 3 minus 2, since that's what we're looking at anyway. That can be described as a linear combination of our vectors i hat and j hat. We can have 3 i hat minus 2 j hat, which is equal to 3 times the vector 1, 0, minus 2 times the vector 0, 1. And that's, and that's absolutely valid. That's a linear combination of the vectors 1, 0 and 0, 1 to describe this vector 3, minus 2. So let's move on now and bring it to matrix algebra. Let's bring it into the matrix format. Now it, it might feel like a little bit of a jump still because we're, you know, it, it, it kind of feels like we've gone from vectors and then we're just putting it into this little box format. But essentially the way that, the way in which this works is that the rules, all of the rules that come with matrix algebra have been developed to match up with everything else, to match up with simultaneous equations, to match up with all other parts of algebra. Otherwise, it just breaks down. It kind of, it's a notation that needs to be used so that it makes sense with everything else in maths as well. So that's kind of where the rules come from. This equation is taking, this equation is taking a vector x and y, any, some vector x and y, similar to the idea of taking a point on the plane that I talked about earlier with the, with the equations. So it's taking some vector x and y, and it's multiplying that vector by this matrix and outputting a new vector 8 minus 2. So you can sort of think about it as almost similar in a way that a function works. You know how a function would take in a value, do some magic in the function box machine and then output a function f of x or whatever, or you know, uh, that kind of that kind of thing outputs a value, you know? That's that's kind of what this matrix is doing to this to this vector. It's taking in it's taking in the input vector x and y and it's outputting this vector 8 minus 2. So let's have a look at the 2D space we have initially. We have the grid lines on here just so that it helps visualize what's going on in terms of the transformation. And I've left the i hat and j hat vectors there at the origin so that, so that we can keep an eye on them during the transformation as well. The grid is just there for a visual, visual aid because essentially every point on this 2D plane can be described as a vector. So let's now transform every point on that plane with our transformation matrix. The transformed plane is represented with these green lines, okay? And the important thing here is that because this is a linear, this is a linear transformation, so all of the lines are going to be equally spaced and they're all going to be parallel and they're not going to have moved from the origin. So this transformation isn't taking in the vector 0, 0 and just outputting a random vector somewhere else. It's staying centered at 0, which is a very important part of the linear transformation. Have a look at where the i hat and j hat vectors have landed. Because after this transformation, the transformed i hat vector has landed at 3 minus 2, and the transformed j hat vector has landed at minus 1, 4. So if you had the vector minus 1, minus 2, say, that's, that's the same as saying that you have minus i hat, minus 2, j hat. 
And so if we were to apply the matrix to that vector, then what we're having then is we're going to have minus the transformed i hat minus two times the transformed j hat vector in the transformed space. And this leads us to the vector minus one minus six. So that's an important thing to notice there is the fact that the vector in the original, in the original 2D space has a linear combination of minus i hat minus two j hat. And once it's transformed, it holds that same linear combination, but of the transformed i hat and the transformed j hat vectors. And so that's really important to us because if we have a look at our if we have a look at our problem, our simultaneous equation problem in the linear combination format that we had, we have x multiplied by the vector 3 minus 2. And that 3 minus 2 is the transformed i hat vector, and then we plus y times the vector minus 1, 4, which, as we now know, is the transformed j hat vector. So we have a linear combination of the transformed i hat vector and the transformed j hat vector equaling 8 minus 2. So there's the question, how can we reach the vector 8 minus 2 using a linear combination of the transformed i hat vector and the transformed j hat vector? As you can see, it's going to take three of the transformed i hat vectors plus one of the transformed j hat vectors to actually get us to the vector 8 minus 2. Which then means that the original vector, the original vector that we were looking for, is 3, 1. And so that's what you can take from the idea of putting it into the matrix algebra form, is the fact that it's taking the, taking the vector 3, 1, and it's outputting the vector 8 minus 2 under the transformation of our transformation matrix. So let's move on now and start thinking about the other simultaneous equations that we looked at in the last video. Let's have a look at this pair of simultaneous equations. We've got 2x minus y is equal to 5 and 4x minus 2y is equal to minus 15. So let's have a look at what that does to our 2D space. So as you can see, the whole of the 2D space has been collapsed down onto this singular line. The reason for that is, is that I can describe the transformed j hat vector as minus a half times the transformed i hat vector. And so essentially there is no way that we can reach the whole of 2D space with those collinear vectors. And so that's why if we were to want to reach the vector 5 minus 15, well it's impossible. We can't. We can't do that with the vectors, the transformed i hat and j hat vectors that we have. So that, that represents no solution. There is no solution to these equations. So let's have a look at the other situation where it, it was the same, same transformation matrix, but instead of five minus 15, we've got five, 10. Because it's the same transformation matrix, it's transforming space exactly the same way. But this time we have a vector 5, 10 that lies on that line. It lies on that line that the transformed i hat and j hat vectors lie on. And with that in mind then, well, there's an infinite amount of ways in which you could linearly combine the transformed i hat and the transformed j hat vectors to reach this point, to reach this vector 5, 10. And so that's, that's what's representing an infinite amount of solutions. So there we have it guys, we had a unique solution, no solutions, and an infinite amount of solutions, all from understanding how a matrix can transform two-dimensional space. So thanks very much for watching guys, I really hope this video has helped you understand how we can visualize solving simultaneous equations using matrix algebra and transforming two-dimensional space. If you like the video, then do leave it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to remain up to date with any new videos coming out from A Clever Chimp. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.